Hello everybody, how are you doing? It's Amanda, it's the 11th of June 2020, so as it is the 11th I thought I would come on and do um, a little mini reading for us all to see what's going on with the energy. I'm going to pull six cards uh, to start with, I'm going to pull three from my own Metatron deck and I'm going to pull three from Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron reed and um, we'll do that in one moment but uh, yeah 11th of May also a shout out to all of the people starting off the level one uh, journey with us today you will get sent your uh, readings um, I've still got one to do Coco if you're watching me I'm still I'm doing yours straight after this video so you'll get yours today as well um, all of the others have been sent um, next month's intake is sold out and uh it's actually it's, it's 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 great because we added another six or seven places i think and i've now got a team of um three other people that um help me with the readings and they're all brilliant readers uh, michelle wilkinson who you know who manages the whole program um marina caplay who you know if you've ever sent a message into my page on facebook and a lovely lady called Penny Wing, who is in Spain and is also another one of my Metatron teachers, so, and myself. So, uh, yeah, it's a real team effort and we, we get these readings out uh, on the 11th of every month. Next intake will be for August and that will be on July the 1st that uh, those spaces become available. They always sell out very, very quickly. I think they sold out within... Uh, or certainly a day. Uh, <clears throat> July's intake sold out within a day. Anyway, let's not jump ahead. Let's just uh, concentrate on now and June and let's concentrate on you. Let's just have a look at what the energy is feeling like today. So let's take a nice deep breath. Um, what spray do I feel like using? I'll just, uh, well, I'm just going to go for that one because to be honest, it's in my <laughs> it's there in my eye, my eye view. Uh, tangerine blush, sacral spray. Whether this is going to come up in the reading or not, I don't know. But let's just have a little hit of that. Um, Mum's move is going quite well. Haven't moved her yet. It's on Monday. So uh, I'm going over every afternoon just to obviously pack and sort but it's going quite well. So um, yeah, no, Monday is a moving day. <clears throat> she's doing well, she's bearing up quite well to it all. And um, <clears throat> I'm very, very busy this week, very, very busy. So if you're sending me an email, don't expect to reply, <laughs> apologies. But it will be next week where I get back to some sort of normal after I've moved her in. That card just fell out of the pack. I think that's actually linked into mum. Time to go. That's her moving towards her new house, you see. Time to go. It's a big thing, actually, when you pack, pick up, pack up a property, isn't it? Um, it's so symbolic of, of moving on because you do. You let go of what you don't want to take with you. Um, you pack up your memories. You pack up things people have given to you. It's quite an emotional thing. <clears throat> and... Um, Seeing her now in her flat and obviously everything's off the wall, it's all very bare. Um, you're left with the shell, basically. You're left with the shell when you've taken all the decorations down and ornaments and things that make it a home. And really, it makes you realise that any space that you move into, um, you can create a home. It, home is about obviously the person in it, the energy in it the love that hopefully is in it. Um, and then I actually think knickknacks are quite important. If you don't know what knickknacks are, it's just an expression for um, uh, ornaments and little things, you know, little things that mean something to you. What's that expression? If it's not beautiful or useful or beautiful, useful or meaningful in terms of some great sentiment attached to it, get rid of it. You know, so if you take those three qualities into the new home, what you is useful, what is beautiful, what is meaningful and yourself, you can pretty much create a loving space wherever you are. So um, anyway, 
let's yeah mum's energy is definitely here because I've also got this card happy happy you see keyhole in the door new door let's hope that she is happy in her new home anyway let's get back to you um let's pull three cards oh, they're jumping around all over the place already for today so this is the 11th of June 2020 11th of June 2020 nine o'clock in the morning I'm early Cosmos mirrors you. Passion, love for life. That's probably why I sprayed the tangerine blush and karma untying the knots. Mm, they're an interesting combination. And on the bottom of the deck, we've got fire dragon strength. I think I'm just going to read these four cards before I go to the other deck. So let's have a look at what we've got here. So we've got the cosmos mirrors you, passion, love for life and karma untying the knots. Um, there's a message coming through here linked into what you put into life is what you get out of life. Um, this passion, this love for life, what you put into life is what you get out of life. I was watching um, Kepatcha this morning and his Pele report, and he's talking about the Hertz frequency for Mother Earth and also for ourselves. And he quotes the actual Hertz vibrational number that equates to, for example, a healthy body. I can't remember what it is now off the top of my head. It could be 40 to 60, I can't remember. And then he also talks about when the vibrational Hertz rate frequency of the body goes below a certain number, that's when you get ill. Um, and what we tend to forget is that joy and love and passion and what makes us feel alive, of course, raises our frequency so much um, quicker than anything else. And when we get stuck in a rut or we're in a phase of life where it feels as though there isn't any joy, it just feels very heavy, it feels very challenging, we feel very stuck, feel very low, it's it's a really dangerous trap to get into because this card, the cosmos mirrors you, is reminding all of us that what we put out is what we get back. And I've always said to people that it's almost this expression of fake it till you make it, which is that even on a day where you're not feeling, you know, on top of the world, you're not feeling full of sunbeams and rainbows and you know, joy, which is the reality of being a human being. Nobody can feel that every day. But on those days where it feels particularly difficult and stuck and stagnant, it's so important to try to fake it till you make it. And what I mean by that is that when you've got those negative thoughts going through your mind or you're looking at the glass that is half empty rather than the glass that is half full, you're looking down at the ground, you know, rather than up to the stars, you remind yourself to counteract that activity, that energy, that thought form with something positive. So if you're going around thinking, you know, oh God, I can't do this, or um, I'm this, I'm that, it's all low vibrational, catch yourself as you do it and straight away affirm something more positive to, to um, try to equal up the balance that's going around energetically in your body because, you know, we know that what we think we become and equally what we think of our body we become as well. So the more that we focus on, you know, I'm this, I'm that, 
I'm ill, it'll create more of that as well. So it's not ignoring problems that are there. It's just trying to very quickly bring in. OK, what Metatron is showing me is it's like. Some of you are going to be too young to remember this. <laughs> in the old days when you used to put a piece of vinyl onto the record player okay um, I think I had one as well which could take two or three pieces of vinyl at a time so it would play you know the record and then when the record was over it just dropped the next one on top of, well it couldn't have been on top of it, it dropped the next one and then it would play that one um, and that's what you're doing it's as though when that old record is just going round and round in the same old grooves that you know oh god life is this and i feel that and you know i'm not feeling good and i'm not well and i oh, and it might be very valid you know this is the thing about fake it till you make it you then have to put the new record on which basically affirms something much more positive um let me grab my affirmation cards that um feel as though they want to come out here they are Every time I show these to you, you uh, last time I showed them, Ursula's cards, Ursula who's passed, somebody said, oh, you know, maybe you're meant to contact the family and get them republished. And actually, no, I think they were just meant to be with me for me to share in my work because um, that's what it's about. It's just about sharing the messages. So I actually feel that she's quite happy that I've got them here and they're anchored here, if that makes any sense. So let's just ask then um, Ursula. Ursula Selwood was her name. Let's ask for an affirmation card then, please, for today. 11th of June, Ursula. What, uh, what do you think people need to be saying to themselves to counteract these stuck grooves, stuck records that we have? OK. Um, OK, so we've got this one. I trust myself unconditionally. Now, let's just think about that. I trust myself unconditionally. If you really trust yourself unconditionally, you are able to get into a place whereby you can move yourself through any obstacle or any challenge or any difficulty that you face because you trust that you have the resources you need. You trust that the universe has your back and that the universe actually is within you as well. Um, and you also trust in... I'm actually hearing you, you trust in, for some people, the impossible. You have trust and faith in the miracle, OK, that however dark it looks, however bleak it looks, that I can surmount this and I will. Um, let's pull one more to go with that as well. So this thing about trust, you know, who do we place our trust in? That's a question to maybe ask ourselves. Who do we place our trust in and why do we place our trust in certain people? And sometimes those people can let us down or they can fall short of our own expectations. And sometimes, of course, we can also fall short of our own expectations. But it's getting to a, it's getting to a point where we actually fully trust ourselves, which also means we have to get to like ourselves. We have to learn to love ourselves because you don't trust somebody who's like a shady character. Um, you trust somebody who looks reliable, um, who has a proven track record who um, has a loving heart, for example. So those qualities you also need to be bringing out more in yourself. So if you feel as though the track record that you've got isn't great, you know, maybe you keep, I don't know, falling into addiction, for example, or falling short of your own expectations, realise that you can start a new, you can start again today. We can all start again today. That's the blessing of the new dawn that we wake up to every day. Um, and that we can learn to trust ourselves. We can learn. We can learn how much resource we have within ourselves. So I trust myself conditionally to bring myself that which I know I need at this moment in time, and that energy which I know is going to help me and support me at this moment in time. And I also trust that the cosmos actually loves me, and that the cosmos is there to help me, not hinder me. The whole point of this card, Cosmos Mirrors You, is the cosmos gives you what you expect. And um, the shape there is also linked into the dodecahedron, which is a platonic solid um, shape, um, 
which also can help you to connect into the higher chakras in the body, connect into the higher realms um, and connect into other parts of yourself. So let's have one more card for affirmation for today. I'll come to the karma one, the karma card we've got out in a minute as well. One more affirmation card for now, please. I think I'm drawn to that one. I'm drawn to the colour. Yeah, nice. It says, I am strong, centred and supported. I am strong, centred and supported. But you see, again, rather than just straight away thinking, oh, who is it then that is supporting me? You know, who is it? Who, who is that magical person that is making me feel strong and supported? I'm being shown like your core muscles. <laughs> I'm not a good one to talk. <laughs> but, you know, it's also symbolic. It doesn't have to be physical. You don't actually have to have a six pack there. But it's to do with your core strength. It's your core strength doesn't have to be somebody else's core strength. When you're leaning on somebody else, that's codependency, okay? That's like, I can't do it without you. What the energy we've got here on the 11th is, no, learn to trust yourself, learn to um, sink into your own strong center. And if at the moment it feels like a wobbly jelly, you know, and it's like that there, no, there is no core strength there, whether it be physical, energetic or whatever, um, in all seriousness, try to start anew again today. The 11th is always a portal, it's always a doorway um, and it always shows the light and the dark. It shows the challenge and the resistance but it also shows the opportunity and the growth, okay? I mean there's so much going on in the world at the moment linked into gateways. I'll talk about that in another video because otherwise it's going to get... Um, it's going to get messy, this video, but just for now, just concentrate on this energy that's coming through for you. We then had the card of karma, and I was wondering how that sort of links in. Um, I actually feel it links into the card that was on the bottom of the deck, which is the dragon. The fire dragon was on the bottom of the deck. I think that the time we're in at the moment is we're burning away uh, you know, the dragon burns away, it transmutes, it purifies a lot of old stagnant karma that is around us and our lives. Now, this is not, guys, the magic bullet whereby it's just you say the prayer, you know, you've got a long standing relationship or situation that's difficult. You know, it's karmic in nature in terms of some of the, the role playing that's happening and events. But it's just like, I just want out of that now. I've had enough of that. No, that no, it doesn't work like that. But for those of us that have really tried to work through karma and we, we just have a knowing that we're at the end of a karmic contract, either that somebody else is paying back to us or we may very well be paying back to somebody else. OK, um, I was very aware a few years ago when in fact my mum nearly died. She had a big pulmonary embolism on her, her lung. And um, she recovered from it. But I, I always remember coming out of the hospital and it was weird. It was like I, I it was like I felt that the karmic contract at that time. It was it was complete. It was a strange one, but it was it was my karma. It was it was something linked into my karma, that the, the history between her and me. I've always been more like the mum, you know, that sort of energy paying back if it's always felt like it's more like a paying back energy it's a supportive energy and I, I suddenly thought this is this is karmic there's something you've done before that led to this situation it's like it feels like it's free now you're, you're free of it now um but I it had taken a long time to get to that place okay so th this is the thing we're all at a some of us many of us actually it's as though there are some karmic contracts coming up Whoa, that's interesting. I'm hearing either, this is a weird thing to say, but it's like either for renewal or for um, transmuting. What do I mean by tra by renewal? Well, the thing about karma is if you don't learn the lesson, okay, and if you just refuse to, say you have a um, some karma to pay back and it is to do with in this lifetime, you are meant to be the one that is paying it back, okay? Uh, and that can be a whole multitude of scenarios that, that play out. But you are just totally resistant to even looking at that, 
looking at any responsibility you may have had in a past life, looking at why, why this dynamic is there. And it's just you refuse to look at it. You know, you ref you refuse to you refuse to pay it back. Basically, you know, um, it's almost as though okay, you're still not learning this, are you? Let's put the record back on. Okay, go back to the record player. Let's put the old record back on. And uh, and what Metatron's now here showing me, and it's like I really want to do this with my ears. Is then the soundtrack becomes unbearable. It's just like oh my god, it's so loud. Turn it off. Turn it off. Because I haven't, you know, it's like, but he's saying no, because you didn't get it the first time round. There is some karma here. It can work both ways. It can be that you're actually in a in a place where you need to be receiving. You need to be receiving, um, whether it be a blessing, a gift, help, support from somebody else, because they have karma to pay back to you. And if you're pushing it away the whole time and like, oh, no, 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 I can manage. I can do it. I can do it. You know, don't worry. You know, the load on my back is just getting so heavy. I can hardly stand up. It's OK. It's OK. I can do it. You're not learning the lesson either, because your lesson is supposed to be to receive in this life, in this lifetime from that one particular person, event or situation. OK, all life is made up of a multitude of different karmic scenarios. It's not always just about it's never just about one particular relationship. Very seldom, in fact, we have karmic situations that play out all around us the whole time. But, you know, we're entering this age whereby karma is becoming um, more and more obsolete as we go through the dimensions. What I mean by that, this is generational. So say, for example, in this lifetime, you live a very good life. You live really in 5D, OK? And that is not as easy as it sounds either, OK? So it's like you really, truly live in 5D. You seek not to harm another. You seek to not be in judgment. You seek to not blame, to not attack, to have love in your heart, to have understanding, to have compassion, to forgive, you know, the biggies that are difficult. Say you do that. Well, you're not going to have an awful lot of karma to pay back in the next lifetime if you come. You're just not. So can you see as you go up the dimensions, because when you next come back, you you know, there's the opportunity to do it even higher. Then um, th there's just going to be a lessening and lessening of, of karma coming through generationally in the future to come. So for that to happen and for us to get universally where we need to be, which is Earth needs to remove itself from these shackles of karma. Well, it makes sense that as we're on the threshold of new Earth, we've got to have a big purge. We've got to have a big purge. So for those of us that have done the work, we're being given opportunities to literally let the chains go, let the chains go. And I think maybe something symbolic that demonstrates that. Um, that you realise that the contract is complete, that you can wash your hands. You can also with love say thank you to whoever the person is in your life where you've been playing out some form of karma with. I thank you. You know, I, I forgive you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. You know, the scenarios are so dif different. So I can't talk general. I can't talk that generally. You need to apply it to your life. But it makes sense to me that we need to be having this big karmic purge at this moment in time. Um, have the candles just gone out as I said that? OK, so for some, it literally is as though karmic contracts are completing. But for others that just are not getting it, you know, it's just like they are they've come down. They're supposed to either be learning, receiving. There's a there's a dance that's supposed to be happening between you and another. And you're just refusing refusing point blank to even look at it or acknowledge it or even it just even acknowledge it that that disc is that record's going to be put back on louder because the point is spirit wants you to get it you know god source whatever you want to call it wants this earth to be free of the shackles of karma which have tied us down for generation after generation after generation. This is both personal and it's collective. Look at what's happening in the world right now. Look at what's happening in the world right now. Um, so that I feel is what uh, is coming through from these first four cards. The illustration that we chose to put onto the card of karma for the Metatron deck is this one and it's the endless knot. And I seem to remember that the words that go with the card are, are, are along the lines of 
by focusing on the symbol, by focusing on, the, you know, the, the endless knot is a very powerful um, energetic signature and symbol. You are able to um, commune and meditate with your higher self, uh, with God, with Metatron, and ask for guidance, support, help, release from whatever karma is around you at this time. OK, so it's working with the energy of this endless knot. And being able to you see what's interesting when I look at these two cards, it's almost like the backdrop is the same. Um, what am I trying to say here? There's some other message coming through. Let me just get the cosmos spray. interesting I'm hearing man. sorry I'm just just mulling that over before I say it but I oh know let's just spit it out anyway we can maybe discuss it another time I'm hearing earth is coming to a point where it's paid back its karma not yet but we're getting there we're getting closer to it I've never thought about planets what I'm being shown is like the wider universe and all of all of the different planets, many of which we don't even know their names, okay, the multiverse, planets after planets after planets, and Earth is like, oh, it's an awful thing to say, because Mother Earth is beautiful, but in terms of the wider cosmos, she's a bit like the dustbin of the universe, you know, she's, she's where a lot of the rubbish is. Um, that's why we come and work out our stuff here, you know, it's like we're, we literally are, sometimes we're wading through the trash, um it's a heavy dense planet earth and it's almost as though earth mother earth um agreed that we could come here and play out these karma games you know um because we needed to but it's like on many most the majority of other planets it doesn't exist it's not there so it's like mother earth has is like she wants she she's she she wants to be free of this karmic cycle as well okay and then she just feels as though she she totally transforms as well. It's almost as though the trash that we put into the, the, the seas and the trash that we litter the planet with is symbolic of this inner trash that we've got within ourselves. This stuff that we just don't want to look at. Mostly it's, it's usually karmic, you know. Um, but the day when we fully can release our karma individually and collectively, it's like Earth becomes this, it's like an Eden. It's like It's like Eden again. You know, the, the, seas are, the seas are clean. The planet is clean. It's not littered because we've dealt with our internal litter. Let's pull some cards from the uh, Wisdom of the Oracle deck now. I felt very drawn to pull this one today, so I don't quite know why. Uh, <clears throat> let's pull four cards from this deck. looking for something that I thought was on my desk I wanted to show you oh yeah you see this on the deck it's got the um fossil amorite I think it's called I've had this one on my desk all week this is labradite it's been um it's a piece of labradite that's obviously been carved but of course real amorites are fossils from thousands and thousands of years ago but it's this thing about um going into the center it's like we're in the center now we can't we can't work, work our way back out until we've dealt with what's in there we're getting to the knotty stuff we're getting to the gnarly stuff we're getting to the difficult stuff but look how far we've traveled to actually get there personally and collectively so rather than struggling, like, let me out as quickly as possible. Let me just get back. No, no, no. Stay, be present, be present with whatever is currently occurring in your life that's coming up for healing, that wants to be looked at, that needs to be acknowledged, that needs to be released, that needs to be communicated, that needs to be let go of. OK, the new cycle can only 
come in when we've truly faced this place. And, you know, those of you that watch my videos, you know, Metatron's been talking about we're in that dark cavern, you know, at the bottom of the pit with our, with our torchlight on our head. There we are. We're there, right in the centre. And we will be able to find our way back out. And we can. But first, we've got to look at what's there. Okay. Uh, I just felt like I needed to show you that uh, shape for some reason. Okay, let's have three cards now then from the Colette Baron Reed deck. June the 11th. Any other message, please, Metatron? June the 11th. June the 11th. Fate. Starry, starry night. <laughs> I've got that song in my head. Sorry, I'm, it's it's only 9.25 and I'm no singer anyway, so I'm even more croaky than ever. <laughs> I'm even more croaky. Vincent van Gogh. Uh, a starry, starry night. <laughs> oh, God, what's such a beautiful song that, isn't it? Such a beautiful song. Starry, starry night. Don McLean. I was lucky enough to see Don McLean uh, years ago. I've probably told you this, sorry. But, you know, I saw him live in Hackney, Hackney Empire. And uh, I didn't really even want to go, to be honest. But we got these tickets and went. And my God, he's just capable of just sitting there with a guitar and the whole room was spellbound. One of the best concerts I've ever been to. Why am I saying that? Well, obviously, I know it's starry, starry night. There's something very poignant and sensitive and gentle about the energy of that. And also this thing about, we'll see what other cards come out. But of course, Vincent van Gogh, Vincent van Gogh, have you say it? Um, I'm pretty right. In I think I'm right in saying he wasn't, he wasn't um, acknowledged in his lifetime. He wasn't. He, so there's this, it's a, he's a, it's a sad old story. Didn't he have his, didn't he chop his ear off or something as well? I think he might have had some insanity. Well, he would have done if he chopped his ear off. He didn't laugh, but he would have done. So, it, I mean, these are insane times that we're in. There's no doubt about it. Very chaotic, insane times in the collective. So maybe we just need that gentleness and that sensitivity and to honour that within ourselves and honour our innate creativity as well. Going back to that sacral spray. Right, what goes with that card of the fates? What goes with that card of the fates? I'm getting distracted. It's almost like I'm getting distracted from fate. I'm getting distracted from destiny. You know, what is what is destined to come once you've completed this karmic cycle is going to come. You know, what is meant for you will find you. I truly believe that. Um, it might be a long convoluted path in terms of how you get there. But I believe in, I do believe there are certain things in life that are fated. I believe there are certain people that you're meant to meet with, be with, events that are meant to happen. But I also feel there's an awful lot of free will as well. Um, so it's like, how long is it going to take you to get to that fated encounter, that fated person? But the stars are aligning. Look at that, the stars are aligning. But equally, the card of cosmos mirrors you. The stars are aligning to try to bring you what is meant, what's destined. But yet again, go back to what we were talking about earlier. If our mind is not believing that life's going to get any better, you know, or that we're just stuck and it's, well, can, can you feel? It's just like the universe, the stars are aligning, but it's like you're, you're sabotaging. You're sabotaging yourself. You're sabotaging your destiny. They'll still find a way to get it to you, but God, it's hard, you know? So don't don't let it be as hard as it needs to be, as it as, as you're making it rather. Um, thoughts create reality. Stars are aligning. Trust. Okay, what else? Let's have another couple of cards. Keep looking at my clock because we've got a plumber about to arrive and Bella's going to go nuts in a minute when he comes. So um, happy, happy. Well, that's the second time that that card has come out. Happy, happy. There's a message here over and above my mum, isn't it? Which is to do with um, happy thoughts. It's what I said. Fake it till you make it. I'm being serious. I'm being really deadly serious. It's like. 
it's really important to do it. I've done it. I've done it in my life. I've done it through my life. You know, and the thing is, it's like when you, you put a smile on your face. If you're feeling very down, the last thing you want to do is put a smile on your face. But when you smile, you know, even if, you've, even if it's a forced smile, there are things that happen to the biochemistry in your brain, which actually releases, I guess it releases some of the endorphins that make you feel better. Fake it till you make it, you know. It's like your body knows what it should be doing. It's like if I smile, if it's not totally genuine, I'm sort of eventually, eventually, it's a habit. It's not, of course, just one time and bingo, you're there. This is about a pra it's practice. And of course, the more that you try to bring the positive thoughts in, then they become more second nature anyway. You don't want to then put on that old, old record of misery, you know. Metatron's in a very humorous mood today because he's saying you don't want to put the Leonard Cohen back on. <laughs> I've always loved me uh, very melancholic music, actually. So I'm a fine one to talk. I don't actually know Leonard Cohen's work, but um, I, I probably would like it because I'm, I'm, I'm big into all of that, you know, uh, <clears throat> music that makes you sort of, yeah, melancholy music. I always have been. So I need to put some other stuff on, don't I? Yeah. OK. Right. Happy, happy. Let's see what else for the 11th of June. Please message on two other cards. Here and now. OK. Yeah. One other card that goes with that. The tribe. OK. Well, the tribe is the tribe is us. The tribe is those that we uh resonate with I, I hear that the tribe is changing though uh, i'm talking here personal lives you know um that the people that we resonate it's almost weird you see that giraffe it's just the giraffe is coming out of this sort of place of shelter it's almost as though as we come out of lockdown it's almost as though the people that we really want to see it might surprise you it might not be the people that you were seeing before lockdown um i mean that's obviously not everybody, but I, I'm feeling as though lockdown has made you think of people that you've really, truly missed, people you really, truly want to hear from, connect to. Um, and if that is the case, it's like with the giraffe's neck, reach out. You know, you might be surprised at the reception that you get, which will be favourable. Um, if it's not people that you haven't heard from for a while, it's new people coming into your life. But it, it does feel I'm hearing the tribe is changing um because okay metatron saying some people in lockdown have been doing the work looking at themselves thinking about their lives where they want to take it and others haven't it's just it's just that it's just that is the case doesn't mean if you've been working you know really hard through lockdown you haven't had time to meditate you've somehow failed the test that's not what i'm saying okay there is this is en an energetic thing that happens as well it's wh whether you've been open to the opportunity and the new energy that has come in through this lockdown period. Um, and, and that can happen whether you're, you know, going off to work or whether you're sitting at home cross-legged for 24 hours a day meditating. I don't do that. <laughs> you know, I'm always busy, but I know also I've been open to the new energies coming in. And I have been trying to look at myself, my life, where I want to be going, you know, all of that type of stuff, trying to document it a little bit, trying to start journaling again, um, aligning to the reality that I wish my life to be going forward, what I want to be doing, where I want to be going, that type of thing. Um, but there's plenty of other people that have just chosen to sort of sit in front of daytime TV and block it out, you know, or being so absorbed in the drama. How many times did, it hasn't come up in this deck, in this reading, but how many times did Metatron give us that card about detached from drama? Because when we're completely in drama and fixated on, you know, whatever it is in the news or whatever, then again, it's just distraction. You, you're not actually getting on with your own process. When done to excess, you know me, I always say that we should be um, uh, knowing what's going on in the news. It's quite interesting. That's just flashed up on my screen. Boris's latest idea is that we're allowed a support bubble, whatever the hell that means. But let's just take that, actually, as an analogy away from Boris's new rule that we're allowed to now socialise in a support bubble. I don't think anybody even understands what the rules are anymore. But anyway, um, support bubble. OK, so let's just think about that from an energetic perspective. 
um, we all need a bit of a support bubble at the moment, energetically. Put yourself in a bubble of light, okay? Um, white light, golden light. Imagine yourself in a cocoon of light as you go out. Um, but anyway, that's the tribe. Um, and then we've got here and now, which is basically, it's a signpost past and future. You're here. You know, it's about what this will be in terms of the future is what you do now. It's pretty much a similar message to what came up in the Metatron cards, you know, in terms of the cosmos mirrors you. So what you do now, the energy that you hold now is, is where you end up going. It's what you end up being. It's, it's who you end up being. Okay, so all the attention has to be on the energy that you're holding in this one moment. Um, it's a great card, actually. Look at that. You are here. Anything else to say? <clears throat> Just have some water. I might just pull one card from. Uh, I'll pull a tarot card for the eleventh after tarot. I need to get myself just a, a rider weight deck. Rider weight deck. I don't actually have one, but anyway, I quite like this deck. Let's have a look. Let's have one card, one card, please, for today. The 11th. The, yeah, perfect. That's the Eight of Wands. Look at that. The Eight of Wands. What are you shooting into the distance? Okay. These are your wishes. These are your thoughts. These are your actions. Okay. You presently are here, okay? That's the only place you ever can be, by the way. You know, we don't live in the past. We don't live in the future. We live in the now moment. But in that now moment, we can be shooting these arrows towards the future in terms of what we um, wish it to be. Um, but, 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 not negating the present moment, okay? Um, what you are in the present moment dictates what the arrows are that, that get shot out energetically into the future, this is the thing. If you think about that, next time you're, you know, going down that alleyway of, oh, it's never going to work. You know, I'm a failure. I'm this, I'm that, you know, I, I can't attract love, I'm, whatever it is, you know. Um, well, look at those arrows that you're sending out into the future. What the cosmos is doing is it's listening to you. It's thinking, oh, OK, he or she wants more of that, do they? OK, here's another great big dollop of it. So this is the thing about fake it till you make it. Make sure that even when those negative thoughts come, because they will, OK, because we all have that monkey on our shoulder, as I call it, that, do that does that, that says, no, nah, you can't do that. No, that's not possible. No, that's not going to happen. When you hear it, acknowledge it and then correct it. And you say, yes, I can. And I will. And it's here. OK, and then start to really sense it as though it really is here. And I'm, I'm living that life already. I'm living the life that I want it to become. I am the person I want to become. It's here. It's now. Interesting, hey? OK, let's end with uh, Archangel Sandalphon just to ground all of that energy in. And then I'm going to get this uploaded. Namaste, everybody. Much love. Be back um, to, uh, I was going to say longer videos. This, this video is already quite long, but um, more of my teaching style videos next week. There's another Violet Pill video that needs to be done ASAP, um, but I will, uh, that'll be next week. Okay, much love. Bye-bye for now. Take care of yourself.